we have seen so far how the exchange interaction between localized electron spins leads to ferromagnetism and other forms of magnetic ordering as a result of the Dirac Heisenberg exchange interaction. But of course, this is somewhat not a only limited interest, because we know that the well known ferromagnets do not have localized spins, namely the ferromagnetic metals such as iron, cobalt and nickel are metals with delocalized not localized electrons. So, in order to account for the ferromagnetic ordering in these metals, it is necessary to consider exchange interaction between itinerant or conduction electrons in a D band metal. We can use the same concepts that we considered for the exchange interaction between a pair of electrons and build in the idea of the electron wave function for itinerant electrons. So, we can write the effective wave function for such a pair of electrons i and j as 1 by root 2 v e to the power i k i r i e to the power i k j dot r j minus e to the power i k i dot r j e to the power i k j dot r i this is the positions at R i and R j, the electrons at R i and R j and wave vectors k and k, k i and k j. Now, this is the exchange because of the indistinguishability of the electrons, this is the exchange term and the two electron wave function should be anti symmetric with respect to the spatial part in order to give rise to a ferromagnetic or spin parallel wave function. So, rewriting this we can write this as into 1 minus Therefore, psi i j square mod psi i j square d r i d r j will be 
from this we can easily see that this will have the form Taking R i minus R j as the separation R between the two electrons, we can now write the probability for two spins being parallel, two electron spins being parallel and being separated at as just this. Now, this should be multiplied by dr here and this goes off giving you n up, where n up is the number of electron spins in this spin up side band which is equal to n by 2. So, that using this we can write the exchange charge density as by multiplying the electronic charge and We take this average, this slash, this dash over this for or this bracketed term is just the average. Now, we average over the Fermi sphere. So, that we have rho exchange of R as So, that would be the form of this of this exchange charge density. Now, to this of course, we must add the charge density E n by 2 due to anti parallel plus the charge density due to anti parallel spins. Doing this, we finally arrive at the effective charge density as So, that would be the form of the effective charge and uh, this is shown in the form of a plot of this effective charge normalized by E n versus as a function of k f r and that shows the so called exchange hole. This means that the presence of the exchange interaction 
leads to a situation where the effective charge density is reduced because of this exchange correlation. So, this leads to a renormalization of the electron energies, which is the starting point of the Hartree Fock approximation. We will not go into the details of this, but use this idea to discuss the so called band model of ferromagnetism. This was first proposed by Stoner and Wolfart. Effectively that means, that the energy of the electrons in the spin up band and in the spin down band can be written as the basic original energy term minus I into n up divided by n and this is minus I n down by n, where n is of course, n up plus n down. That is the total number of electrons and I is the stoner parameter. Which describes the energy reduction due to electron correlation. We define a parameter R which is n up minus n down by n. So, this is the difference between the number of electrons with up and down spins and therefore, this should be proportional to the magnetization. In order to put these electron energies which we have written in a slightly more transparent form, we redef redefine the zero of energy with respect to by subtracting I times n up plus n down by 2 n. So, subtract this from the energies and redefine the energies. So, we denote this by E tilde. minus I R by 2. This can be easily verified and similarly, E down turns out to be given by where E tilde of k equals E of k minus this quantity. So, starting with this, these are the renormalized electron subband energies and our aim is to calculate the magnetization which is proportional to the parameter r. So, we can write r as 1 by n sigma f up k minus f down k the summation over all k values. 
where f of k is the Fermi Dirac distribution function. which we have discussed already. So, substituting for this r turns out to be 1 by n sigma over k, writing the actual form of the Fermi Dirac distribution function and substituting for the E up and E down uh, values the energies. So, this will be E minus E, e tilde minus E f minus I r by 2 by k b t, because there is a negative sign there plus 1 minus 1 by exponential So, so the we simplify this by noting that we have a function f of x minus delta x here and a function with the f of x plus delta x. So, this is given because of the exponentials, we can write this as plus higher order terms involving delta x cube into f x by 3 factorial etcetera. So, using this and applying it to this, we get the parameter r as 1 by n sigma k d f k by d e of k times i r neglecting the other term which is necessarily positive the times f dash d f. So, this is we know that the Fermi Dirac distribution function has a negative sign here, whereas the next term involving the third order derivative is positive. So, if we want a positive magnetization, a non-zero magnetization, which means that r should be positive. We arrive at the stoner criterion for ferromagnetism. we can see readily from this, this criterion to be this will have a maximum value at t equal to 0 and it will have a particularly simple form at absolute 0. So, we will evaluate this at absolute 0.
over the summation can be written as And we know this is going to give you a delta function and therefore, we can simplify this as So, that would become where d f e f is the electron density of states of the Fermi energy. So, from this we get the stoner criterion as and we can redefine V by 2n d of E f as some d tilde E f, in which case we get a particularly compact form for this toner criterion for ferromagnets. Now, this has been calculated the electronic density of states at the Fermi level for the various metals have been calculated and using these values the product I times d tilde E f can be calculated and that is shown in the picture and it can be seen that the stoner criterion is fulfilled only for iron, cobalt and nickel. So, that is a very remarkable result predicting ferromagnetism according to the simple stoner criterion in the D band metals namely iron, cobalt and nickel which are well known to be metallic ferromagnets. So, that is how the simple stoner model accounts for ferromagnetism in these metals. Now, the next question is what happens in an external magnetic field. It is quite simple and straightforward. So, this stoner parameter the r becomes where this is the 2 mu b v is the Zeeman splitting in the presence of the applied magnetic field. So, instead of I r it becomes I r plus 2 mu b v and the magnetization is nothing but n by v times r. So, that can be written straight away in the form. So, the magnetization and therefore, we get the magnetization is given in this form in the presence of an applied field 
Therefore, we can define the susceptibility as the ratio between m and b, which, which is given by. So, it has the form chi 0 by 1 minus i times d tilde f. So, this is known as an enhancement factor. This is called a stoner enhancement of the magnetic susceptibility. So, this is the stoner enhancement factor which increases the magnetic susceptibility. Next, we would like to calculate the spontaneous magnetization and its temperature dependence. In order to calculate this, we assume a delta function behavior for the electron density of states, d electron density of states at the Fermi energy. In order to keep the calculation simple, And with that assumption, we get the parameter r as we have the same as before exponential mu b b naught minus i r by 2 plus 1 minus 1 by exponential u b b naught plus i r by 2 plus 1. We set to bring it to a simpler form, we make the following substitutions. We set T c, a parameter T c as i times mu b effective by mu b into 4 k b. We also take r tilde as mu b effective by mu b times r. So, that in terms of this, the r tilde becomes simply 1 by exponential 2 r t c by t plus 1 minus This shows the correct behavior. This tends to equals to 1 for t equal to 0 and equal to 0 for t equal to T c. So, T c defined in this way is the Curie temperature of this ferromagnet. In addition, for t very small compared to T c, very well below the Curie temperature this r tilde is given by 1 minus 2 e to the power minus 2 t c by t. And in the neighborhood of t c, this is given by root 3 times 1 minus t by t c. So, this gives a number of 
things to compare with the experiment. The figure shows the factor parameter r tilde as a function of T by T c. So, this is the near the critical temperature, the expected behavior according to this model is root 3 times 1 minus T by T c to the power half giving rise to a so called critical exponent of half, but what is experimentally observed is one thirds as can be seen from the next figure. So, the critical exponent magnetization goes as 1 minus T by T c to the power 1 thirds in the neighborhood of the critical temperature. So, there is a strong deviation in the critical behavior at the ferromagnetic Curie temperature. Also, the low temperature behavior there is considerable deviation of the experimental results data points from the expected theoretical curve. So, these are due to the shortcomings of the Stoner model, especially that the Stoner model does not take proper account of the excited states, because in addition to spin flips accompanying the excitation from one band to another, other elementary excitations with a smaller quantum of energy are possible and they can also cause spin flip. This is not taken into account in this toner model. Now, for T above the Curie temperature T greater than T c, we can expand the exponentials and write R as mu naught by 2 k b t into b p naught plus t c by t into r. So, that leads to a susceptibility which goes as c by t minus t c and this we can readily recognize as the Curie wise behavior. So, in short we have described in terms of the simple stoner model, how one can account for ferromagnetism in a D band metal such as iron, cobalt and nickel and how this leads to features which predict the correct Curie wise behavior and also leads to a stoner enhancement of the susceptibility. The temperature dependence of the spontaneous magnetization of course, you have the correct overall behavior for the order parameter namely the magnetization, but the critical behavior as well as the low temperature behavior are not very well described by the stoner model because of the improper treatment of the excited states. So, with this we have some idea of how band model of ferromagnetism can be used to describe magnetic ordering in metals. With this we conclude our discussion of magnetism.